Welcome back to another episode of Kansas City's Northeast Newscast. I'm your host, Paul Thompson, and I was joined this week by Claudia Visnich, the branch manager at the Northeast branch of the Kansas City Public Library. Visnich sat down with us on the precipice of her retirement, which will happen at the end of March, after nearly two decades serving the Northeast community. She was gracious enough to sit down with us this week to talk about her career, what she'll miss most about her time in the Northeast, how technology has changed the role of libraries, some of her favorite programs undertaken by the Northeast branch since she's been there, how she's planning on spending her retirement, and much more. What follows is my conversation with Claudia Visnich, branch manager of the Northeast Public Library. Thank you for listening. Paul Thompson here. We're at the Northeast branch of the Kansas City Public Library, sitting right next to Claudia Visnich, who is actually about to retire. She's the branch manager here, I should mention right off the bat, and she's announced her retirement effective... April 1. April 1. So we're coming up on, I guess, what, we're about two weeks away from that right now. I'll just start by asking you, how are you feeling so close to your imminent retirement? Excited. Do you have big plans for it? What do... I am. I'm actually moving to Jefferson City. Wow. And You running for public office? No. Oh. <laughs> no, what's the plan? No plan yet, I guess. All right. A little bit of R&R? Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, I'll, I'll still be in Kansas City until about the end of June. Oh, excellent. Cool. And how long have you known that this would be your final year? Is it something that had been planned for a long time, or did it just kind of come up as uh, sort of the days progressed? The first week of February, actually the second week of February, I just woke up one day and decided, I think I'll retire this month. <laughs> this <laughs> had it been something you thought a lot about before? Um, I thought about it like back in October, just briefly, but then mm -hmm. um, in, for some reason in uh, February, it just felt just right. And I've been told by many people that uh, you'll know when it's right. Right. So uh, you wake up one day, it feels right. And if it still feels right the next day and the next day and the next day after that, then you know you've made the right decision? Yes. When did you ultimately uh, let the library know that this was going to be your last year and that you were planning to retire in, in April? Shortly after I signed the papers to, to retire. Uh, okay, cool. So that, so that happened. It's been about, it's been almost two months that they, they've known for about two months. So essentially you woke up one day and then shortly thereafter you, you, you made it official? Yes. Excellent. Have you had any reservations since? Um, oh, yes. Here and there? <laughs> Here and there because I'm, I'm definitely going to miss the Northeast area. Mm -hmm. I'll miss library work here, services to the community, the different organizations that I work with off-site. Uh, it's been a really great... I've been blessed to be here at the Northeast Branch cool. in this community. Neat. Yeah, and I know the community really appreciates you, too. We've heard from several people already. It's one of the reasons why I was so adamant about meeting you and, and interviewing you uh, about your time here is because I've heard from a lot of people already that, oh, Claudia's good. She's getting ready to retire. You, you, you have to talk to her or we have to do something or, you know, I, um, I think sometimes, and I've seen this before with others and I've been covering you know, news in the city for almost a decade now. I, I think the gravity, or, or I think some people don't realize the effect that they have on others. And, and when someone's there day in and day out, oftentimes people don't think to, to recognize them in that way, right? And uh, I imagine that you will be hearing from a lot of people over the course of the next couple of weeks. But, but have you already heard from anybody who um, is sorry to see you go, at least? I've heard from a few, yes. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll hear from more as well. But. Um, at any rate, I, I, I guess I wanted to kind of dive into your work here at the Northeast Branch. Can you kind of paint a picture about when you started and what initially brought you to this library? I uh, started back in February 2000 at the uh, Lucille H. Bluford Library as you service um, librarian. In November of 2000, was when I moved over here to Northeast as branch manager. And you saw this opportunity here. Did you have a, a chance to come by and visit and, and see what kind of services they offered before you took the job, or what was that process like for you? Yes, I, I had the opportunity to come by and, and check things out. And what was your impression at the time? I liked it. I, I saw the diversity of the neighborhood. 
I saw the diversity of the, the people in the library. Um, at that time, it was a lot of Vietnamese, more Vietnamese were in our neighborhood mm -hmm. than there are now. Right. Um, so as what libraries do, they, they uh, kind of curtail their services toward their community. Mm -hmm. uh, their book collection is usually toward the community as well. Sure. So you would have essentially English language services, things like that, or you'd have right. a lot of books related to growing accustomed to living in the United States or things like that that are, are kind of catered towards the an immigrant community? Yes. Interesting. Well, I guess initially what you started with at the Blueford branch, what was it that kind of drew you to library work? I, I've actually, I was a nurse mm -hmm. in the past. So you've been helping people and, and I, I've all I've been your... helping people. So I was a nurse in the past and in um, I lived in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and I grew up here in Sugar Creek, actually, oh, really? and uh, moved to New Orleans in 72. Um, and then after that, um, we moved around quite a bit. And uh, New Orleans was always our home, but we moved in and out for right. 15, uh, 15 times in eight years, which was a lot. But wow. it seemed practical at the time, because <laughs> <laughs> my husband was getting a uh, hat had a degree in engineering and he was um, jumping from job site to job yeah. site or, or different opportunities as they arose right getting his field filled in uh, engineering okay. built before I moved to an office anyway uh, uh, the thing that drew me uh, and then I I went to uh, volunteer at the school library where my children were going to school <laughs> and uh, because I became a stay-at-home mom for mm -hmm. a temporary set of time in 80, 1984. Mm -hmm. And before I knew it, I was at Tulane catching up my undergrad degree and at LSU getting my master's. And So being a stay-at-home mom didn't suit you very well? Well, I loved it, but I wanted to do something with my children, too, and support their school. Right. So, so. having that, oh, and you said you went to Tulane? And, at Tulane University. And ended up, what were you studying there? I was studying a uh, philosophy. <laughs> I took a bunch of philosophy classes in college. I loved it. I, me too, but I ended up with a, a social science degree and a minor in paralegal studies and a mm. minor in philosophy. So Cool. Um, and mm. then from there, you, did you stick around New Orleans for a while? I stayed in New Orleans um, and went to LSU to get my master's in library science. Uh, that was a 72-mile drive one way, four nights a week, plus wow. one weekend night for hope you had some good months. radio stations. <laughs> I, it was, about, it was uh, about the time that the audio books, oh, right. uh, there, weren't very, there were not very many choices. But, but they'd I be on cassette? To, mm -hmm. Nice. So I listened to a lot of cassettes <laughs> going and coming. Cool. And w w why did you choose to go to LSU for uh, the, the library uh, uh, In each state, there's usually just one library school that offers the master's in library science. What was it about library science that drew you in? Um, kind of the excitement of it, that, the answering the questions, the helpfulness. Right. The, so it uh, seems like that's sort of natural to you, that, right. that sort of wanting to reach out and help people. That, correct. The, uh, I, I worked at the school library, and it went from pre-K to 12th grade. Mm -hmm. And um, back in the day when I was helping, uh, and they hired me as a, for their librarian assistant, the only thing I knew how to do was turn that film strip knob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I helped the kids sign their names on their card. And uh, eventually what happened, their librarian, who was also their home economics teacher, left the school. And they asked me if I had to take over for her. So and that's... often the case, right, with that stuff. <laughs> just kind of so, happenstance. That's right. So that's when I decided that um, I need to make best friends with my public library mm -hmm. uh, librarians. And I need to um, get enrolled in school. 
Well, you know, libraries have been important for me too. I, some, one of my first jobs, I mean, I worked in a grocery store when I came of age, went at 14, 15, right when I became old enough to do so. But after that, in my, my late high school years, I worked in public libraries. And then in college, I worked at the research library up at KU. It was, it was pretty actually kind of neat. People would fill out their requests and you would go into these stacks that are, you know, five, six <laughs> you know, stories below ground. And you had your little cart and you would pick out all these interesting old books and then sometimes, uh, I hate to admit it, but you know, you'd sit around, you'd stop, you know, you whatever you're doing, you'd, you'd see something interesting that you picked up for someone else, or you see someone interesting in the row row over, and you pick out something and just kind of start flipping through it because they're just such a wealth of information. And I think that's what kind of drew me to it too. I mean, one, it was a job I could get on campus, but two. It was somewhere where I would end up checking stuff out or I'd end up just, you know, somebody would be requesting a book for research and went before I returned it, I'd kind of flip through it and just see what, you know, see what they were researching. And I think that just having that at your fingertips was, uh, at least for me, was something that was kind of a draw. I would assume it would be somewhat similar for you to, to kind of have these resources at your disposal. Yes. You'd have access to the best audio books, right? Right, right. <laughs> Um, one of the things, too, is uh, when I was in college the first time around at Warrensburg, Central Missouri State at mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. uh, I did work study in the library, and the librarian trying to talk me into taking some courses in library, and sci library science. But sh all she did was sit behind this big glass window and typed all day long on a typewriter, and I knew that's not what I wanted to do. Well, that's actually kind of what so. I do, I guess, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> funny, but it didn't appeal that, to you at the time. You said, I yeah, don't know about that. That typing on a typewriter and sitting behind the glass window and watching everybody wasn't, so wasn't what I was expecting. Did you graciously decline, or how did you handle that? I just said, I, I, at that time, I decided that I was going to be a nurse, right. and I mean, I had already decided I was going to be a nurse by then. But, but slowly but surely, your, your mindset sort of changed a little bit on that? It did. Was there kind of a, a light bulb moment, so to speak, where you said, I could do that, and I'm interested in that? When they offered me a job at the school. <laughs> Right, and you said, well, oh, okay. Yeah. So, and then what were the circumstances surrounding your move to Kansas City? Um, well, I grew up here in, in the Kansas City area, and I do have four children. They all grew up and moved away from home. They, either for jobs, for school, actually two came to Missouri, mm -hmm. and uh, one in Springfield, and I still had a son in, at Northwestern in uh, Louisiana in Natchitoches, and my uh, youngest daughter, she uh, married a guy, and they were, uh, he was a journalist, and they did go. a lot Very of Very respectful around. profession, <laughs> yes, I understand. Yeah. Traveled a lot, so, so I took the time to come back to Kansas City. Cool. And so you come to the Northeast branch as the I branch manager. Came, right. But I came to Blueford first. Right. First to Blueford, then you, you found a position opening as a branch manager here. Yes. Can you describe the kind of services that were provided at that time here? I mean, I, obviously, you come right at the turn of the century. There's been a ton of changes since then. How, what were the services that were provided then? And then maybe later we can talk a little bit about how that's changed over the years. One of the biggest services we had was with computers. We had a paper list where we had to sign people onto computers, call out names continuously all day long. And there would be 20 to 30 people waiting for a computer. Right. And it's a sort of like the old model with the big box, right? And uh, right. you had maybe, what, a couple of them? We've uh, about 20, at least 20, oh, really? 23 altogether. So dang, you were doing pretty well. Yeah, we were doing well, but we would have so many people in the library waiting to use a computer. So at that point, what were they typically using the computer for? Did you have a dial-up internet connection at that point still? No, we didn't. Yeah. So you were, what, what were they typically using the computers for? You know, hard to say. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it is somewhat hard to say. But, there, but there's lines out, essentially people are lining up to use them. They were lining up to use them. And that was kind of the, I mean, it's, they, computers had obviously been around for some time before then, but, uh, you know, that's when access to internet really seemed to take off, right? And, and, I, you know, I, I just think it's kind of a fascinating time. I, I wondered when, when you sort of realized, or, or if there, I mean, was it just the lines when you see all these people out the door that, that the access to internet and, and ac access to the services that are available on the internet, that it would be kind of, a, it would become such a crucial component of what libraries offer? Sure. 
I, I think in the beginning, nobody realized how big it was going to be. Right. And uh, as people started coming in to use computers, you know, some people were so mystified by computers. You right. Know, what, uh, what a computer can do. I know when I first took my com first computer class, and they say, look at the desktop. Well, I'm looking at the desktop, right, right, yeah, not the, the, the literal not desk. The monitor, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, and you're not the only one, I'm sure. Yeah. So I I learned because when I was working in New Orleans, I taught classes to um, the staff and to the community. So I had to learn to you to rephrase things differently, right, and to reword things. But here at the Northeast Library, it's it's the the computers have been a big part of the the system because now we do all these e products. Right. I mean, I don't even have checkbook out anymore. Yeah. How often do people actually <laughs> check books out these days? Right. I they, mean, because you they you can do it remotely, or if they right. want to re check check books. I guess I would ask, what percentage of the patrons that come in here are actually in in here to go check out a physical book anymore? Probably half. So you still have a decent portion of yes. it, but the other half are getting ebooks or you know using the internet or, or mm -hmm. coming in for programming right I mean Correct. that was when I first met you and I came in for a uh, one of the book club classes and I got a chance to sit in on a conversation but how I guess what kind of programming have you emphasized since you came here as the branch manager and why well we have uh, the we have some children's programs where uh, where we have story time, we do crafts with the children. We have an adult craft program as well going on. Our adult craft program is uh, well attended by about at least 16 people. Hmm. Um, that kind of evolved because we were, we did something with We've Got You Covered and the sewing lab. Mm -hmm. And people that came to that program said, why can't you have free programs like this for adults? Mm -hmm. You know, because they were going other places and they were being charged for programs. Right. So we started thinking, how could we do this? So in the beginning, Debbie Gam started a program with them where they, they were doing some quilting and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, sewing product, projects. And then um, Tiffany, uh, we hired her last year and she took over the the craft program and she does a craft every Saturday every mm -hmm. second Saturday of each month cool and it's well attended but it came out of necessity from customers asking you know why can't you do this for us well actually we can yeah <laughs> so and we we let people know all the time that if there's something in the library that we don't have that that they would like or that they would like us to order or, or get for them we're more than happy to do that how important is it for the library to be funded in order to have that flexibility to create new programming? I mean, how have you seen the the funding of the programming evolve or, or I guess maybe devolve over the course of, of your tenure, specifically at the Northeast Branch? Uh, the funding, the library funds us with money for programming. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have to stay within our budget. Does it, has it stayed relatively steady? Pretty, pretty steady, right. steady yes. And... Uh, because we have other programs, we have two book clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, one book club, it kind of wrapped up and it's getting ready to start again in May. Mm -hmm. But we have the uh, Sunday, first Sunday afternoon book club. Mm -hmm. And Diana um, uh, runs that. Um, we get, uh, I think we even have a couple of local or, uh, authors in that club. Right, I think so, you did. Yeah. I think that's what initially brought me to it when so, I came in for one. So that, that was pretty neat. Are there any programs that are sort of near and dear to your heart that you would really like to see continued in, in your stead once you sure. retire? Uh, the craft programs for sure. And then we also have a spinoff where we do a lot of health programs. Mm -hmm. We have uh, line dancing the first and third Saturday of each month with the Steptacular Steppers oh, okay. and of Kansas City. And... Uh, but this, we had to reserve both rooms because the group has gotten so big that it's taken up both spaces. Wow. How did uh, everybody find out about it? Did, did they ever tell you? Um, no, but a lot of it's word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, through the grapevine, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And then the university extension, 
We have a strength training program on Monday and Wednesday evenings hmm. where we use hand weights and uh, ankle weights hmm. and strength tr programming for 55 and older. And then we have an aerobic chair exercise with Nikki Fit on Friday mornings. Interesting. I challenge anybody to come in and do the aerobic exercise. Um, when I first looked at it, I saw chair exercise. I said, this will be a cinch. Right. I, the first day I did it, I went home and had to rest all afternoon. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, uh, that's kind of how I felt about yoga the first time I tried it. I said, how hard can it be, you know? And then 45 minutes later, I'm sweating bullets and <laughs> I, can't, I can't do any of the moves, you know, and I'm sore <laughs> and I never win again. But, you know, it's a separate story. I'll, I'll, I can tell it another day on another podcast. But what do you, as you get closer to the, your retirement day, what, what do you anticipate missing the most about being here day in and day out? Community outreach, because my focus really was community outreach. Um, like I said, learning about the past, the present, and the future. Um, just, I just really love this area. And... Um, you know, I have to give a lot of kudos to all the people that are working really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Northeast Chamber of Commerce, the, the NEED organization, um, you know, everybody that works together. This is a community of people that work together. Right. And how important has it been for you to kind of open up the library for community gatherings as a spot where people can come to? to have meetings. I know I came here when Kansas City University was putting together their their um, bid essentially to create a master plan development district. And I could talk all day about that and it would take that long to explain <laughs> that that whole situation. But I, the, the point being that uh, you city leaders came here, uh, third district councilman Quentin Lucas helped organize a meeting here yep. where it was really well attended. I mean, uh, yes. dozens of people showed up to learn over, about uh, what's happening. Yeah, you yeah, said you were about to say over about 100. About 100, yeah. <laughs> a little uh, over 100. And I, I would imagine that it probably felt pretty good to open up the doors here. It, it was outside of regular hours, I think. Correct. Know, wasn't, it, it was closed. We were actually closed for the day. It was President's Day. Right. Yeah, you were closed for the day, and, and that 100 people came in nevertheless, and you opened your doors for a community meeting on a, on a subject that meant a lot to a lot of people around here. So I guess specifically I would ask, how important is it for you to be a place or a refuge or just a gathering spot where people can have those types of conversations? Very important. Now, uh, uh, com this is like the community hub, mm -hmm. the community center that Northeast does not have. So. Right. And how did that come about, that specific meeting? Um, that specific meeting, I think it came about because the, it was Quentin who had asked me if I could do it. Really? So yes. he reached out, essentially called the library out. and said, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Can we do it? All right. And then I stated we're closed, and, <laughs> but I'd also stated prior to that, yes, we could do it. Then I stated we are closed because they were talking about coming in a little bit early. Oh. And uh, so I came in three that afternoon to make sure that when they did arrive, everybody would be. Well, that's dedication. <laughs> uh, the other, and I've also seen for just civic engagement, I think it's been big. It's obviously a, a voting location. Correct. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it probably has been a voting location for some time. Mm -hmm. But in, in addition to that, I, I heard an anecdote recently that it, there were lines out the door for people to come in and get their taxes done. Absolutely. Could you talk a little <laughs> bit about that as well? We do offer free taxes. And uh, the Northeast Library in particular has worked with the University Extension for quite a while with Shatomi, mm -hmm. uh, Lester, and uh, Shatomi supported us for two years. Then, then we went system-wide with the, the VITA taxes mm -hmm. and yes and that is they I'm not sure how everybody hears about it you wonder sometimes right mm -hmm. but they do show up hmm. and the first day we had like 150 people in our library waiting to have their taxes did they all get it done or did they have to no, come back because they only they were only able to take 30 right. participants and <laughs> funny well we might have to take some responsibility for that because i know we've been putting that in our newspaper uh, that's regularly. Where I read it. so yeah <laughs> hopefully we uh we didn't inundate you with too many people trying to get their taxes done but is that service still ongoing i guess we can absolutely let people know. yeah right they still have some time right mm -hmm. they do right they do awesome well were, was there any 
programming that maybe you didn't get to, to get started up here that, that you wish you would have or that you would like to see them kind of carry on and, and, and get started? Well, it's not one that we haven't started. It's one that we've actually been doing for a while. It is the um, Learn English at the Library. Hmm. And it's not an ESL class, but it's learning just English conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's building. And it's, a, again, people are coming because of word of mouth. Right. They had a friend come or they learned about it through a family member, mm -hmm. right? And that's the one that I would like to see really build. And Vera um, Gutman that works at the desk, she's been very good at helping us. Hmm. Uh, work with that so how do those classes go essentially what's the I mean somebody shows up how long do they last and, and what kind of subject matters are they hitting they up? start about they're about an hour and a half long mm -hmm. and the subject matter since I don't teach the class I'm not 100% but I do know that they are trying to um, engage them in everyday conversation right so basics what well, maybe having a conversation at the grocery store or something with the cashier or being well, able to ask basic questions in order to, to have your daily needs met correct even right. to ask us questions at the desk right there's one woman who's in the class who used to just come in and just kind of smile and nod her head at us mm -hmm. and now she comes up and she talks to us so wow. that's really how great does that feel to that have feel, somebody that feels progress? really good me yeah and I think she feels really good about it as well. Right. Well, you're, you're learning something. And I think it's important to note that these programs are free to the public. I mean, tax dollars go into it, sure. But these are programs that people can utilize to better their lives, right, on, on an everyday basis. And they don't have to come in and pay a fee to do it. Uh, right. It, does that make it a little more special to you to know that people can come in and you can be that you can provide these key services to people's lives and, and not have to charge them at the end of it? Yes, right. exactly. Yes. So you're coming up on a couple of weeks left, right? What, what, are, what are the tasks that are still kind of hanging over your head that you need to get done? Or what are the next two weeks going to look like? To make sure my schedule is covered, um, I, I pretty well have everything organized and situated. Um, the 29th is actually my last day. Okay. <clears throat> I will be out of the library all next week. Um, Monday I work at Westport and then uh, the rest of the week I'll have the week off. Do you, is that a normal thing that for you to go to Westport? No, uh, right now uh, with me leaving we'll be down three branch managers. Oh really? So, <laughs> so covering, so there's a group of us uh, because we are encouraged to work um, as a team Mm -hmm. There's, a, it's not just me covering Westport, it's other uh, branch managers as well. Interesting. So it sounds like there might be some job openings in, in the Kansas City Public Library for some branch managers if anybody's interested. Right. Um, and also, I just wanted, I don't know if you feel comfortable I, I um, even, even putting this out there, but if somebody wanted to come in, uh, people that you've worked with in the community, uh, members of the public, city leaders, neighborhood leaders, Will they have an opportunity to come in and, and uh, say goodbye and thank you if, if they get an? I, I know you said you won't be here next week, but for that following after that, will you be in be yes. in for most of the time if they want to come in and say hi? Sure, I'll be in from Tuesday through Thursday. And that is the oh next week or the following? No, the week? following week. Okay, so those and that'll be that Thursday. That then will be your last day. My last day. So that next day you wake up. What do you think you'll do? Mm, I'm not sure yet. But I'm thinking I'll probably do some quilting. There you go. You heard it here. <laughs> hey, I really do appreciate you taking the time, and I appreciate your service to the community. I know a lot of other people do. It was one of the reasons why I got in touch with you to set up this interview. But I, I definitely appreciate your time, and uh, thank you so much for serving the Northeast community for all these years. Why, thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. And Paul, before we end, can I say thanks to my staff? Sure, you can say thanks to whoever you want. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody system-wide from the Kansas City Public Library that has worked with the Northeast Branch Library, and my current staff, which is Diana Ash, Dave Joyner, Radina Candy, Cheryl Fonville, Debbie Gam, Vera Gutman, Cheryl Maldonado, and Tiffany Wynette. I'd also like to thank all the, uh, take the time to thank all the um, organizations I've worked with, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Northeast Alliance Together, 
uh, Maddie Rhodes and um, the CID. Sure. Uh, I'd also like to thank the um, uh, the guys that clean the street because they often clean the library parking lot. Oh, the urban ambassadors, the, I think is what they're called, yes, right? Yes, urban ambassadors. Thanks. Yeah, no, they do good work. They're really nice guys, They do, too. and they clean they clean my yard, the library yard often. Good. Well, awesome. Is, is, if there's anybody else you, you want to thank, now's the time. If I've missed anybody, thanks. <laughs> they can come find you next, uh, not this following. <laughs> Week, but yeah, the, 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 the week after that. So I guess uh, not the 19th through the uh, the 25th, but the or the not the 19th through the 24th, but that very last week there, the, the 26th week. to 29th, right? That'll Correct. be their opportunity. If, if you forgot to thank them, they can come say Correct. hi and bye and uh, chastise you for forgetting to thank them. But I think the thought was there, obviously, and I'm sure they will appreciate you calling them out by name, especially your staff. So. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you sitting down and talking to us today. Thanks, Paul. And that'll do it for the latest edition of Kansas City's Northeast Newscast. I want to thank Claudia Visnich once again for participating this week. And for those out there who do want to say goodbye to her, there will be an opportunity to do so on Thursday, March 29th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Northeast Branch of the Kansas City Public Library where she'll have a retirement party. So feel free to stop on by for that and say goodbye and thank her for her service to the Northeast. Now, if you can't make it to that party in the afternoon on March 29th, there will be another opportunity to pay your respects to Claudia Visnich on March 29th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Northeast Chamber of Commerce at 2657 Independence Avenue. Thank you for listening, as always, and tune in next time.